This is Plant-Based Briefing. Inside the wool industry and tell Wilson you want vegan athletic equipment from PETA.org. And I'm your host, Marian Erickson, and this is the Curated Content Plant-Based Podcast, where I narrate a variety of articles on plant-based and vegan topics with permission in about 10 minutes or less every weekday. And today's post is from PETA.org, People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals. They've created an action alert to help people easily reach out to Wilson Sporting Goods to ask them to create vegan tennis equipment. This advocacy effort is in large part thanks to Danny Rosenthal at Sheeps.Tennis. He's created a company to advocate for wool-free tennis balls and other vegan tennis equipment. His website, Sheeps.Tennis, has a lot of resources. He's even had a variety of tennis balls currently on the market, lab-tested, and found that, as it turns out, there are a couple of them that are vegan, accidentally. And I say accidentally because they're not marketed and they're not intentionally produced as vegan balls, but they're also, sadly, low-quality tennis balls. The nap is very thin, they're produced with the cheaper technology, but they are available to some of us. There's a couple Wilson brands available in the U.S. There's a Babolat brand available in the U.K., for example, and Danny has those listed on Sheeps.Tennis. I buy those tennis balls, but they're not that widely available and they're not the greatest quality, as I mentioned. So most tennis clubs and definitely tournaments will not use those balls. And over 350 million tennis balls are produced every single year. And tennis is growing in popularity, so that's only going to increase. And consumers are looking for more plant-based and eco-friendly products now. The plant-based market is growing so rapidly, it's expected to grow 450% by 2030, according to MarketWatch. So there's a market out there, and there's an opportunity to take cruelty out of tennis. Please take about three seconds to click the link in the show notes to fill out this action alert, and it'll send a note to Wilson on your behalf. You can also find it at sheeps.tennis right on the homepage as well. In today's episode, I'm going to read an article that outlines some of the cruelty involved in the wool industry, as well as reading the action alert PETA has put together. And last week, episode 146, I read an article outlining some of the environmental hazards of the wool industry. So check that out if you haven't already. And now let's get to today's plant-based briefing. Inside the Wool Industry and Tell Wilson You Want Vegan Athletic Equipment by PETA.org Inside the Wool Industry Without human interference, sheep grow just enough wool to protect themselves from temperature extremes. The fleece provides effective insulation against both cold and heat. Wool was once obtained by plucking it from sheep during their molting seasons. Breeding for continuous fleece growth began after the invention of shears. Shearing plus mulesing equals sheep abuse. With approximately 68 million sheep, Australia produces 25% of the world's wool. Flocks usually consist of thousands of sheep, making it impossible to give attention to an individual sheep's needs. For instance, it is considered normal in the Australian wool industry for at least 4% of young lambs to die every spring from poor nutrition. Because there's so much death and disease in the wool industry, the rational solution is to reduce the number of sheep who are used for their wool in order to maintain them properly. Instead, Sheep are bred to bear more lambs in order to offset the deaths. In Australia, the most commonly raised sheep are merinos, who are specifically bred to have wrinkled skin, which means more wool per animal. This unnatural overload of wool causes animals to die of heat exhaustion during the hot months, and the wrinkles also collect urine and moisture. Attracted to the moisture, flies lay eggs in the folds of skin, and the hatched maggots can eat the sheep alive. In order to prevent this condition called fly strike, Australian ranchers perform a barbaric operation called mulesing, in which workers carve huge strips of skin and flesh off the backs of lambs' legs in the areas around their tails. This is done to produce smooth, scarred skin that won't harbor fly eggs, yet the bloody wounds often get fly strike before they heal. Studies have shown that the procedure causes stress levels similar to those of castration and shearing, and the effects, pain, discomfort, and weight loss, can last for 2 to 14 days. One farmer who successfully protects his sheep from fly strike by using a combination of fly traps, chemical sprays, breed selection, and grazing management, attributes the industry's resistance to giving up mulesing to, quote, 
a bit of old boys club arrogance in a once grand industry that is now struggling a bit, unquote. When PETA first exposed this gruesome procedure, it prompted international outrage. Mulesing was banned in New Zealand, and Australian wool industry officials promised to phase it out by 2010. But more than a decade later, they continued to bicker internally, and most lambs in Australia are still being subjected to this horrific mutilation. Sheep are sheared each spring after lambing, just before some breeds would naturally shed their winter coats. Timing is considered critical. Shearing too late means wool loss. In the rush, many sheep die from exposure after premature shearing. Shearers are usually paid by volume, not by the hour, which encourages fast work without regard for the sheep's welfare. Experienced shearers clip more than 350 sheep in one day, and that pace is maintained for weeks at a time. PETA and its international affiliates have exposed cruelty to sheep on 117 different properties in six countries on four continents. Please visit PETA.org for details from an investigation of several shearing sheds in both Australia and the United States, where workers were seen violently punching sheep in the face, stamping and standing on the animals' heads and necks, and beating and jabbing them in the face with electric clippers and a hammer. Some sheep died from the abuse. Investigators also documented that large, bloody wounds were left on the sheep's bodies and that workers stitched gaping wounds closed using a needle and thread without administering any pain relief. In PETA's latest investigation, an investigator documented conditions in Victoria, Australia, once again revealing that cruel practices are common in the wool industry. Shearers kicked sheep in the abdomen and back punched them in the face, and even stood on one sheep's neck as she flailed in fear. Workers talked about other shearers who had broken a lamb's leg, cut up sheep, and gouged them in the eyes. A shearer still employed by the crew allegedly bit a sheep's ear off in anger. Pete also exposed conditions on a farm in Argentina that supplied wool to Patagonia. A witness found workers hacking into fully conscious lambs, starting to skin some of them while they were still alive and kicking, and otherwise mutilating, abusing, and neglecting lambs and sheep on farms in the Ovis 21 network. Patagonia announced that it was dropping Ovis 21 as a supplier and would not buy wool again until the company could be assured of the quote-unquote humane treatment of animals. Live Export Old or unneeded sheep are sold for slaughter. Millions of live sheep are shipped to the Middle East and North Africa every year. In 2006, in conjunction with Animals Australia, PETA conducted an undercover investigation to expose the handling and slaughter conditions endured by the sheep who are exported to these destinations from Australia. Despite the Australian government's and the live export industry's claims that animals are treated humanely, the investigators found that sheep and cows were dragged off trucks by their ears and legs and left to die in barren feedlots. They were bound and thrown into the trunks of cars and then slaughtered in prolonged and cruel ways that are illegal in the U.S., Europe, and Australia. Tell Wilson you want vegan athletic equipment. Consumers don't want their sports equipment to be produced in a way that causes animals to suffer and negatively affects the environment. And if the James Cameron documentary The Game Changers taught us anything, it's that athletes of all types are going vegan to up their game and be kinder to animals, the planet, and their bodies. So why aren't athletic equipment companies keeping up? It's time for sporting goods manufacturers to change their game, too. The Wilson Sporting Goods Company reports that it's the number one equipment brand across more sports than any other brand. That puts it in a position to save countless animals' lives and make huge strides to protect the planet. Leather, like that used in Wilson's baseball and softball gloves, commonly comes from cows who endured branding, tail docking, and castration. Some animals are skinned while they're still conscious. And at the more than 100 wool industry operations that PETA entities investigators have visited, even on so-called sustainable and responsible farms, workers beat, stomped on, and cut sheep, as well as slitting their throats. No one should go through such suffering for a tennis ball. And animal agriculture is responsible for nearly one-fifth of all human-induced greenhouse gas emissions. Cows are intelligent, sensitive individuals who feel pain and fear, develop deep relationships, and get excited when they achieve a goal. Gentle sheep are happiest with their flock mates and leap into the air with excitement when they see their friends and family. These animals don't want to suffer and die to become athletic equipment any more than our dogs or cats would. 
Please urge Wilson to get animal-derived materials out of the game, starting with an easy switch to leather-free baseball and softball gloves and wool-free tennis balls. Take action now, linked here. You just listened to Inside the Wool Industry and Tell Wilson You Want Vegan Athletic Equipment from PETA.org. And it takes just a few seconds to fill out the action alert PETA created that will send a note to Wilson on your behalf. So go to the show notes right now and you'll see the action alert link. You can also find it on plantbasedbriefing.com and select the menu item, plant-based tennis. And you can also find it at sheeps.tennis and it's right on the homepage there as well. And even if you don't play tennis, remember there are hundreds of millions of tennis balls produced every year. So we can get the cruelty taken out of those easily. So please share this episode and the action alert with anyone who might also be interested. Thanks for listening. 